African drums are talking. Over arid veldt, through forests, sinister in their untamed beauty, over steaming primeval swamp whose fever-ridden vapor holds the white man at bay, over untold distances of undulating plain, the drum notes travel. Eaten with distance and then reborn as village by village relays the message, the drums bring you a story of Africa. In the village of the Leopard Men, the Professor, Jack, Lorna, and Nguru saw a beautiful girl known as the Witch of the Moon apparently change herself into a leopard, a feat which she is supposed to be able to effect at will. During the night, the Professor sees a leopard slinking outside his hut. He is positive it's the beast into which Ifabi, the girl, is supposed to change herself. And to support his contention that the girl and the beast are two separate entities, Nguru, Jack, and the Professor trail the animal. They find it sitting on the roof of a hut just outside the village. As the flashlight beam is turned directly onto it, the beast starts to spring and the professor shoots. At that moment, Nguru drops the light. The snarls of the animal change to the groaning of a woman. And when the light is again turned on, they find the father, witch of the moon, wounded. Give me the light, Nguru. Hold her head up, Jack. Hmm. Nothing serious. Just graze the side of the head. See any other marks? No, none, sir. Uh, nothing on the shoulders or down the back? No. That touch on the head is all. Hmm. That's strange. Well, what do you make of it, Jack? Well, I... I don't know what to make of it, sir. I'm completely at a loss. I'm almost afraid to think. Well, then in that case, don't try to, boy. Just accept it. We shot at a leopard from a distance of 20 yards and it turned into a woman. But we all saw the beast. He was crouching there on the roof of the hut and... Well, and forget it. That's the simplest thing to do. Yes. Yeah. Just before she fainted, she said we'd broken the law, eh? Yes, and that it was written in the moon. Mm. I want to get a good look at that hut. Get if I'll be back to the village and... Oh! Oh! The white man has... She's coming out of it, sir. Broken the law. And if Bobby is dying... No, I don't think so, if Bobby. You won't die as easily as that. Does... The white man believe now. Hmm? Possibly. Keep your hand away from that wound. I'll dress it as soon as we get back to the hut. Stand her up, Jack. Right. Can you walk, Ifabi? The forest moves under my feet. Well, then Nguru will have to carry you. Buona. Nguru carry no woman. Well, I have a good mind to make you do it for dropping that light. If Ifabi can walk, white man. Good. Then we'll get back to the village. Lead the way, Ifabi. You know the ground? Yes. White man. Shall I carry her, sir? She doesn't look really fit. No, Jack. She's fit enough. I think she wanted you to carry her. That's why I suggested in Guru. I'm wondering what her game is. That wound in her head is... Look, she's taking you to that narrow path. Well, that's better than walking in this grass. And Guru, what made you drop that flashlight just when I fired? Why not? Devil him throw spirit runga. Eh? Aona, see. Well, there's a mark on his wrist. Is it something that hit him? Uh, no doubt at all that something did hit him. Must have been a very useful spirit club at all events. Well, there's Lona, standing at the door of her hut talking to someone. Looks like Malini, the witch doctor. Wonder what he wants. Do you think there'll be trouble when he sees a Fabi's wound? No, I don't think so. It's very slight. Where did you go, Father? I've been frightened. I heard a shot and dressed quickly. And the witch doctor called me out. He said you'd shot a leopard, and, well, the way he said it frightened me. Well, now, don't worry, Lord. It's all right. Go into my hut, Bobby. White man, you have broken the law. Well, uh, how do you come by the knowledge so quickly, Malini? I have a medicine that tells me many things. Well, then go to your hut and make medicine to tell you how if Bobby came by her wound. For no bullet of mine has made it. Come on, Jack. Get some hot water ready. We don't in- want infection to set in here on the... Bellini, it is I, Adako. What need you, Adako? The moon is about to set, and you should be in your hut. I am a warrior. I need no sleep. What do the white people at this hour with Ifabi? She has a wound. The big white man makes medicine for it. It is a trick of Ifabi to be near the little white dog. 
She has no eyes for me since he came to the village. What would you, Adako? You cannot kill him. The big white man is powerful, and their black warrior has quick eyes. But there are ways, Melina. You have no liking for these people. No. They are too inquisitive, and they mock my medicine. But they shall learn that Melina is as powerful as the moon, and that his medicines are numbered with the grasses of the forest. That may be. What would you, Adako? You have seen how Ifabi looks at this white man. Uh, you have seen her walk before him. You have seen how she took his brain that he may desire her. In your wisdom, Melini, in the wisdom that was your father's before you, surely there is a secret way. Yes, there is a way. Come into my house and leave your spear in the entrance. But it is a costly fetish, Yadako. And the price, Melini? Fifty rods and two bags of salt. Hmm. Then because it is to your benefit as well as mine, I will pay you half of that price. It is well. But no man shall know of the palaver, or your death is assured. Hmm. No man shall know unless it be from your own tongue. What is this fetish? In the making... It requires the blood of a cockerel fresh killed. To that is added a measure of your own blood. Clay taken from the bed of the river of forgotten people when the moon is but a rind, mixed with the blood and made into the image of the white man. When this is completed, my magic begins. Mm -hmm. Ko, you have these things. They are here. The clay was obtained by Mnchama whose crops were destroyed five moons ago. His enemy is now dead. Are you ready to begin? I am ready. Then get me the chicken that sleeps in the corner. The fire is low. (laughs) It is here, Melini. This is a sharp knife. I use only the knife fashioned by my grandfather in the fires of the great wizard. Hold the head over this bowl. Ah, it is done. Hold your arm over the bowl. It is enough. This leaf will stop the bleeding. Hold it to the wound. Now a tail feather from the chicken. Ah... See this powder? It is the dried blood of an owl. It shall carry my magic through the air to the white man. I mix it in the bowl. Dig, Gadako. Dig with your fingers a hand span from the outer edge of the fire where you stand. Ah, The clay is there. Give it to me. Put the body of the chicken in the hole and cover it that its soul may sleep in comfort. It is done, Melini. Good. Face now the east. Dwell strongly in thought upon the white man, or Melini weave the thought into the image. Oh, sisters of darkness, from the shadow of the black mountain... Where rises the river of forgotten people, send out thy power. Take the shadow of the white man in the name of Uzuri Wakopoteza Akili. Bring life to this image that it may feel the urge of death. The word is spoken. Mshimba. See, Adako, the image is made. What is there for me to do, Milini? You shall take this image in your left hand. With your right hand, pierce it with this long needle, working ever over each part of the body towards the heart. Have patience. The sisters of the mountain will not be hurried. Remember, from the remotest part to the heart, and dwell strongly in thought upon the white man. Jemahayo, Milini. I make magic that the sisters may be repaired for their work. I tell you, Jack, there's something behind.
I know this is trying to impress us. If Poppy and the witch doctor are excellent showmen, and I'd prefer to let her think we're impressed with her magic, we might learn what she has in the back of her mind. But I heard you tell the witch doctor, Melini, that it wasn't a bullet that made the wound in Poppy's head. Yes, maybe I was wrong to have done it. He's in the picture somewhere, and it might cause some bad feeling. But for the life of me, I couldn't leave him thinking he'd put one over on me. I did it principally to make him think I knew what was going on. Well, mm. well what's the matter, Jack? I don't know. I guess I've got a little rheumatism in my right arm. Peculiar pain went through it just now. The girl's wound isn't bad, is it, Father? No, it's a mere scratch. I don't think it was enough to have laid her out the way she's pretended. Did you notice oh. that it? Mm, what in thunder's the matter with my arm? Well, you better get to bed, Jack. You need some sleep. No, it isn't that. I, well, maybe I better lie down. Yeah, right? stretch out, boy. Here, let me take your pulse. You know, sir, I felt suddenly as if I'd taken a good beating. You know, manhandled. Mm -hmm. Pulse is normal, no fever. Hmm. Yes, rest is what you want. Can I get you anything, dear? If I put some hot cloths on your arm, it might do some good. No, I guess it'll be... Oh, oh, gee. It's burning as if there's a fire in it. It seems to be going down my right side, sir. Yeah, bring that lamp over here, Lana. Yes, Father. Give me your hand, Jack. You weren't bitten by anything out there tonight, were you? I don't think so. I didn't feel anything. Did you go by any of those poison thorn bushes? I don't think there are any in this part of the country. Not the deadly kind. How do you feel now? My leg's burning badly. What in the world could have done it? Well, there are some minute indentations on your arm, Jack, as if a hypodermic needle had been inserted. You think they're insect bites? But then no insect could... Yeah, you never can tell about insects in this country, Jack. Some of the deadliest are the smallest. Oh, gosh, I... I feel strange. My left foot seems to be dead. I... I can't feel a thing on my right side. What can be wrong, Father? Is there anything I can... Wait do? a minute, Lorna. He said the pain started in his right arm and went down the right leg. Then his left foot. Those marks in his arm. Put the light down here on the calf of his leg. By George. I knew it. It's witchcraft. 